Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD, and today is all about getting started with Wim Witch. So, first things first, Wim Witch is a utility that is built with PowerShell, which is super awesome. Uh, I believe Donna Ryan is the individual that built this uh, utility. And two thumbs up for her, man. She is phenomenal. I will place this link at the bottom of the description so you guys can actually do a little reading and research on it. But I'm going to show you guys how to get started uh, because it's pretty cool. Now, on the website, there's two links. One link actually uh, takes you to the GitHub, which you are able to download it. And, you know, when it gets updated, you're able to update the repository, do it that way. The second link actually gives you uh, text. So you're able to just copy all the text, which I did personally. I uh, did a control A, did a copy, and I went to my start menu. I typed in PowerShell, Windows PowerShell ISE, right clicked on it, ran it as an administrator. I uh, got the user account control, clicked on yes here, started loading up. And once it loaded up, I basically just right clicked inside the white space and just paste the code. And then from there, I went to file, save as, and I changed the name to Wim, which all one word. The name doesn't matter uh, as long as you give it a name and it has the PS1 extension to it, PowerShell, right? Click save. Uh, when I run it, it basically gave me an error. So the first thing that you need to do is just run a set execute policy remote sign and then pick your answer. Uh, I pick yes to all because this is a testing environment. And then once you do that, you run the PowerShell script and you should get this. It, the first line right there, I, I wanted to do a little research because it said the Wim which is running on a supported OS. So I was like, okay, what OS am I running? Uh, I am running a preview build, which is uh, Windows 10 1903 build 18995.1. So it looks like it supports this operating system in this build of Windows 10, so I was super happy. I believe in the article they placed the requirements, like the core requirements for this PowerShell to run. So again, take a look at that article. So from here, I hit yes. Hit enter. Once you hit yes, you will receive a notification about new Git provider is required to continue. Hit yes. Once you hit yes, it's going to continue loading up. Once it's completed, you will get this nice little utility. Uh, it looks really basic, but it's extremely powerful. It is it's just really amazing. For those individuals that love to customize their WIM images, with updates, drivers, and remove apps, and then repackage it again into a WIM file and then upload it to maybe like SCCM or MDT. This is the utility for you, okay? This is basically uh, DSIM and steroids, but just a better graphical user interface. Uh, and everything is run by PowerShell, which is pretty cool. Now, the first tab on the utility is the import. Uh, when you click on select, it is going to want you to select an ISO. Once you select your ISO, you click on open. And from there, you're going to select what type of import you're going to do. For my testing, I only did install.wim. And then from there, at the very bottom, you are able to rename your WIM image. So I gave it btnhd underscore windows underscore 10. And then you click import. Now, behind the scenes on the PowerShell side, you're going to see that install.wim file is being mounted. Uh, it's basically copying all that information over to particular folders that were created on the desktop for you. And it's gonna start copying files over to a folder called staging folder. So inside the desktop, because I ran the WIM which file on my desktop, it created all these particular folders like the autopilot, staging updates config staging is where it's dropping all this information into i did notice that the utility does provide a non-responding but don't freak out about that uh, just leave it alone and eventually it's going to start working with no problem once it's completed it's going to say importing completed now if you go inside the imports folder and within imports folder you're going to see wim folder 
and you're going to see your win file. Whatever name you provided for me was btnhd underscore windows underscore 10. That is my win file that I'm going to customize and upload drivers and updates into that. And then I'm able to take that win file import it into MDT or SCCM and then push it out, right? Now back inside the utility, another cool tab is the source whim. So within the source whim, if you click on select and you pick the whim file that we kind of like extracted from the first tab and you select that and you open it, you're going to get another nice little window and you pick the operating system. Now, I'm using a Windows 10 2016 LTSB, so I only have one image index. So if you're using maybe like an enterprise version, you probably have different indexes. You just pick the one that you want to use within your environment. For me, I only have one. So I selected that and clicked OK. And it's going to start loading up all the information like the edition. Uh, is it a 64 or 86 bit? The version, the patch level. Uh, the language in the index. Now, if you go inside updates, this is really powerful right here. Uh, if you click on enable updates and then you click on install updates, you're going to see in the background, it's going to start loading up stuff within the PowerShell commandlet prompt, right? And then you're going to see again within the updates, you're going to say the software update module is out of date. Please click the install update button, click on that, and it's going to start doing this thing behind the scenes. And then you're going to see on the command prompt on yellow, please close the Win Witch and all PowerShell windows. And also in the utility, they gives you a little notification too. So close everything. Make sure you close the utility, uh, the PowerShell file, as well as the Windows PowerShell ISE. Just completely close it. When you do that and you go back and you run the PowerShell script, you're going to see on the command line, right? There's no yellow, there's no warning. That means that it was completely updated. That's a good thing. Go inside your source WIM tab, pick your WIM image, and then go back inside updates. And then from there, if you want, this is another cool thing. Uh, for me, it's not really gonna work because of the version that I have is not really 1709. I believe it's 1603 that I have for Windows 10 LTBS. But if you have a Windows 10 image, uh, that is a 1709, 1803, or 1809, 1903. You could pick what version you want, select it, and hit download. And it's going to download all those updates for that particular build. Phenomenal. It's, so, it's, it's an awesome utility. I really, really like it. If you're dealing with Azure, dealing with autopilots, you're able to enable it here and just configure it with a Intune authentication account and password to continue that setup. If you have a bunch of drivers, you can enable the driver uh, import here and then select all your folders. If your WIM image contains apps, now for my LTBS, LTBS, I love that image because it doesn't have like the Xbox app, it doesn't have like the maps, it's just completely uh, filtered out with all those stupid apps that Microsoft gives you. But if you have a Windows 10 professional that has like Candy Crush, the Xbox Live and the Microsoft Store, it will load up here and it will allow you to select and remove it from this utility. Once you completed customizing your WIM image, you go inside, make it so. From here, you're able to change the WIM image name to finalize it and the location of where you want it. Once you do all that information, you click on the button, make it so. Once you click on make it so, it's going to create your customized WIM image with your removal apps, your drivers, and your updates in one final WIM image. Then that WIM image is the one that you will take within your SCCM environment and MDT to deploy it out to your machines. And then last but not least, the last tab is save slash load, which allows you to save your configuration for future reference. And then you're also able to load uh, that save configuration for future customization. How cool is that? So I'm still playing around with this utility. It is extremely powerful for what I've been playing around with. It is already on version 1.1. I'm super excited to see what else they're going to push out on this particular utility. If you have any comments or concerns, leave them at the 
bottom. Again, I will leave all the information at the description as well as the comment section. Don't forget about hitting that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.